Welcome to Circles Off, episode number 62, Jason Kelsey. Oh, wow. 62. I don't even, I don't have a rebuttal for that one. That's tough. Do you think, do you think I actually what? knew that or did I look it up? You probably knew that. What was William Nylander on the Leafs before he switched his number? 62 or 63 on the Marlies, oh. but he never actually came to the Leafs with that. I don't know. He came that, that's number. beyond my I'll comprehension. That. Zach, look that up I'll real quick. It. William Nylander, Mar- Toronto Marlies. I can't, yeah. I mean, uh, off the top of my head, like. Was he 62 62? 62. Or I don't know what other athletes I can think of. 62 Wasn't is probably. Was Maxima again off? Well, that may be. <laughs> he has I, one Like, if you remember. Goal. Yeah. Probably baseball. Like, it's probably some famous baseball players with 62. That's what I would say is probably the most common. Johnny, 62 what? with the Marlies. Wow. William Nealander on guy. the Toronto Marlies. Try, I tried, I really tried to like show off some sports knowledge and I got one up so hard. In the <laughs> intro. Oh, I don't really know. I don't know if that's one up. Like no one has that jersey. It's nothing. It's just a minor league team. Um, anyways, what's up, Rob? Uh-huh. It feels like forever since we've recorded a podcast. Yeah, Listen, because we recorded two weeks ago. Yeah, that you... The, Secrets out. I mean, we we pre taped with um, with Chris Bennett, which was a great episode. Got a lot of good feedback. I actually listened to. I don't listen to a lot of our episodes. I don't like hearing my. I like my voice being heard. I don't like hearing my own voice. Um, but I did listen to that while I was driving to Chicago because a lot of people were messaging me. They're like, "Oh, this is like really really good interview," and uh, turned out to be a really good one. However, it's going to be a different episode today. Well received, by the way, that last episode. Thanks, everyone, for the feedback. If you haven't checked it out yet, please check out episode number 61. Chris Bennett, director of trading for MLB and and, uh, NFL Mm -hmm. over at Circa Sports. And um, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool to to talk to him, and I'm glad everybody liked it. But yes, different episode this week. Go on, Rob. This is going to be our first ever reaction video, I would call it. So I'm driving to Chicago with my wife. Before, Before... I get the commentary of like, oh, you know, Pizzola is so poor. He's got to drive to Chicago or whatever. Please recognize what airline travel is like in North America right now, especially Canada going to the U.S. Absolute disaster. So Joey Kanish, who I know listens every week and who's going to make some sort of stupid comment about this. I drove to avoid that for one. But it gave me a lot of time on the road. You know, I get to a, a rest stop. I'm stretching my legs and I check my phone and I got like, no, no exaggeration. We'll put, we'll put up the screenshots. Got like four or five Twitter DMs of like, Pizzola, you're never going to believe this this podcast that dropped. You have to give this a listen. Can Instead of doing tweets that trigger us, can you do podcasts that trigger us? And I'm, I'm getting all these messages. I'm like, what is this? I'm like, oh, Ross Tucker podcast. I know Ross Tucker, not well. He probably would never remember me or anything. But when I used to work at the score back in the day, I was a producer for Hardcore Sports Radio. We used to book a lot of football guests. Joe Fortenbaugh was a big one who worked for National Football Post at the time. And when we couldn't get Joe Fortenbaugh, we got Ross Tucker. So I had a lot of communications with Ross Tucker. I'm like, oh, what, what could Ross have probably possibly said that was like a major issue here? I read the episode description. Ross Tucker had on Simon Hunter of the Action Network. Professional sports better. Professional sports better. Simon Hunter of the Action Network. I proceeded to listen to this podcast. 24 minutes. We don't have to listen to the full 24 minutes and react here because some of it's like divisional, you know, team previews of this year. Almost drove my car off the road several times. My wife literally turns to me and says, why are you breathing so hard? I'm like, are you listening to this? She's like, yeah, what's, what's going on? I'm like, oh man. So today's episode is going to be devoted to reacting to this. Johnny has not seen this yet. So I've, I've seen, I've seen some clips. I'm not going to lie, but we're, but today what we're going to do is, is react to the full thing, which will be awesome. So, uh, by popular demand, episode 62, we're reacting to an episode from Ross Tucker's podcast with Simon Hunter. Hit it, Zach. How many views this thing have? It's a good question. Check the views on this, Zach. I'll pull it up. Ross Tucker and Steve Fezzik. Actually, pause even before yeah, we start. Vegas, here. baby, baby. <laughs> it's Ro- going to be better. Ross than Tucker and Steve Fezzik. I was, as I was watching this, or listening to this, I will say, I've also watched it once since because I wanted to see Ross's reaction. But if Fezzik was here, I feel like this would have went very, very differently, this podcast. 
very differently. I'll get into that a little bit afterwards, but keep that in mind because uh, usually this is Ross. Wait, and- well, we haven't even given the proper background. Basically, this guy on here, the guest on here, talks like a lot of a big game about a bunch of stuff. And a lot of it really just doesn't make much sense. So what we're going to try to do is break it down, maybe try and comprehend potentially what's going on here. I don't know if we'll be able to do that. In fact, I'm positive we will not be able to do that. But we can share some thoughts and then just break it down. Now, again, not trying to call out any individuals or like, you know, make everyone anyone feel bad. But I feel like this is a very good entertaining segment. And I think a lot of people could learn from basically breaking down bullshit when they hear it now and then potentially uh, being able to replicate this and see other guys who might be lying through their teeth um, and go at that. I mean, we can't even hear that. Well, Cut this part out. I don't want to no, no, call li- him a liar, but I mean, listen. he did say he gets paid in sports memorabilia <laughs> for a ma- major syndicate. He's getting paid with this Rob Gronkowski yeah. ball. <laughs> 17 units, and then the guy's like, here's his PSA graded Rob Gronkowski football. I will say this. Obviously, we bet. We, we do, we're pretty successful in betting. I'm not going to say, you know, I win on everything I do. I've had prolonged losing stretches. It doesn't matter. I think in any profession where you dedicate a lot of time to your work and you're successful at it and someone misrepresents themselves in that profession, it's going to frustrate you. Like if you're a doctor, for example, and then someone just comes in and tells you how to like, you know, operate on a patient who's like never done it before, you're going to say, buddy, what the hell are you talking about? And this happens in every profession. So I think it's fine to get triggered by this stuff because like we're passionate about it. I also don't want people to be misled. Like I hate that. That's what I hate the most when people are, are misled and they don't know any better. Wait, but didn't, didn't you lose your edge and that's why you joined Betstamp? That's apparently, apparently <laughs> so. I haven't posted a screenshot of last week either. It was another good one. So I have more, more ammunition in the bank for when people come after me. Yeah, on for, what, for anyone who didn't see what we're talking about. Check out my I guess, Twitter, Yeah, please. check out Rob Twitter. Someone, uh, a couple people, I guess, were calling him out. And then someone got, they triggered him by saying, Hey, Pizzola, is it true that you quit, that you started working at Betstamp because you lost your edge in sports betting? And um, Rob basically, uh, he basically like, you know, I just put that guy in the coffin, but I'll let you guys, I'll let you guys go uh, check out the tweet. All right, Zach, hit it. Simon, what's up, man? How are you? Good brother. Just, I'm an anxious guy at this time of year. I'm just getting ready for football. All I can think about is about football, but you know, it is, these are times of year you're trying to kill the days, spend time with family and, you know, make up what you need to just or as you're going to disappear for about six months. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Okay. So we've talked about this before because you've been on the show before. But listen, we get new listeners all the time, new YouTube viewers, and maybe they forget from a year ago because you were on about a year ago talking NFL win totals. So just give them your background, Simon, and what you're doing now professionally because I know it's not just media. You also are part of a syndicate, so just give them the rundown. Yeah, I started betting with a syndicate about – I might be like you, buddy. I think 10 years come pretty fast, but this will be – and I'll be entering my 10th season betting professionally. So I started off as a runner for two years, worked my way up to be one of the lead guys in the group I work for, betting NFL, and that's what I specialize in. So there might be, man, we we bought a couple other syndicates over the last three years. There might be about 100 guys I work with now, but luckily I'm still the only one that does NFL for my group. So it's a a high-pressure job, Ross, as sure as a lot of people understand where they're wanting to work, but I love it, and um, yeah, I pretty much ventured into media. I mean, I think they legalized it in 2018, New Jersey. And I moved back here um, right around then from Las Vegas and basically, you know, started doing shows with Chad Millman, uh, who works for the Action Network. And we started, like, he had a show called The Favorites. I joined him and I would do maybe like a 15 minute hit, just giving out picks. And uh, yeah, it's kind of turned, um, I would say really crazy how big, everything's gotten in the media with sports betting since more states have come online. I'm sure you experienced it raw. So I kind of went from this shady backroom guy uh, as a sports better to, you know, Ross can see me now I'm clean shaved. I do media hits. Um, I try not to curse as much on Twitter at people. I'm, I'm slowly getting better at it, but I'm still at my core. I'm always looking for the edge. I'm a sports better at my heart. So for me, it never, never doesn't matter how big I'll get in media. I always want to be sports betting and working for a syndicate. So it's been cool experiencing both worlds. 
So I've got so many questions just based on you saying I. that right there. Lots of so, questions immediately. Wait, pause, pause, These pause. are things I don't know. Pause, pause. By the way, up to date, he currently hasn't actually said anything bananas except for the part where he said he's, his it syndicate bought, bought up a, a other, few other syndicates. Yeah. But other than that, he's actually currently hasn't well, said Well, he's anything. just, he's given his background, which is very important to under, for the listener to understand the context of what someone does. So he, he was a runner for a few years, meaning that he was betting on behalf of other people at sports books getting money down for other people, essentially for those that don't know. And then he used that and eventually um, worked into a higher position where he was, I guess, still betting, but but he was maybe giving out what the picks were supposed to be or whatever, betting mainly NFL. So that's a context we got so far. Definitely when I'm listening to this the first time, thing that stands out to me right away was the buying out of under, uh, other syndicates, which... We'll get For into my, it. If I'm interviewing him, my first question right off the bat is going to be, hey, so you mentioned you bought a couple other syndicates. How would that possibly work? So exactly. hit, hit the roll. So how does one betting syndicate buy other betting syndicates? Oh, man, Ross. What's the value in doing so? Like, how do we buy guys out? Yeah, like, I, I, I guess, how does a syndicate buy other syndicates? Uh, either they want to step down, like the guys who are running it. They, You know, they, they're just like, oh, you know. Oh, okay, so it's. The guys who are running it don't want to be the ones placing the bets the anymore. Yeah, yeah there's just so much the drama. So they're basically selling you their their clients. Their clients what and clients? the guys who work under them, which is like, you want to, like, if I have, say, five guys on my team that does NFL, it's the best. Like, I'm all about adding more smart guys who are established well, because there's just not that there's so many frauds out there, but it's really hard to be consistent, especially in NFL and when I get a bunch of different guys telling me different information, it's the best. Cause I don't know all the answers. I'll tell you right now, like I am constantly learning. That's learning. That's been a huge advantage to me as a sports better. It's like every year I adapt to the league and COVID really magnified that. I mean, we had a whole season of no fans. That was major adjustment. That was a big learning thing for me where I took me a little bit to catch up to it. So yeah, the, the betting, the buying of syndicates actually is pretty rare. But it does happen because guys just want to move on in life. You know, like the guy I work under, Bob, I mean, he might be 73 now. It's like, how much longer is he going to still be doing this? But he's addicted. He loves, he doesn't even care about the money. He just loves the rush. So he's one of those guys where I can't sell him selling our group. Pause it for a second. So do we still have any idea what the buying of syndicates is? No, he didn't even mention this. He said it's pretty rare. Some guys want to get out of the business. But what? <laughs> I've worked with groups. You can call the group a syndicate. You can call whatever you want, right? To me, I've seen guys just disappear. They say, I'm done. I'm retired. Sure, maybe they're runners. You, they'll go on to work for someone else. Have you ever heard of, of the buying of buying out of another group? Personally, no. I'm not saying it's impossible. I, I agree. But, but like, I don't really know what you would be buying other than maybe like, are you buying IP? Like, are you accounts. buying their models or stuff like that? Or accounts? People, like a staff. staff. I guess. I guess. I guess. Listen, it's possible. It's possible. In this scenario, he obviously hasn't answered it. He also did say he recently bought a, a couple syndicates. So <laughs> that would even be even more rare. Like, you're buying two, three. Okay, go ahead. Keep, because I think he goes into a little bit more from the clip I saw. Go ahead. Um, so let's talk about the syndicate for a second. Okay. So there's a hundred people you work with, which means a hundred people that, that buy in, that put their money in. No, there's, there's about a hundred other guys do what I do, which is we, we make bets. We have clients and like we pull money together. Like I just hit really big on the NBA finals. I don't know as much. I watch basketball, but I watch the Sixers. That's as far as my NBA knowledge goes. Cause I work in this group where like, okay, the guy I work with, he gave out the Warriors early on. Like I'm in that email. Like, again, it's funny that we still do an AOL email, but that's where <laughs> the group is done. And he'll just keep sending out different tiers. So he'll say, okay, tonight, Golden State, their bet's a tier one. That's like, you, you want to bet pretty heavy on that. Other nights, like one night he was on Boston, he was like, or the under, it was a tier three play. It was a lower play. So that's how I'm like, I give out those picks on my own show. Cause I don't know stuff. Like, I don't know the NBA like that, but I know this guy, he's like me. He's putting 80 hour work into that okay, stuff. Pause, pause, so, yeah pause, there's so pause, much to unravel here I'm, I'm getting really tilted okay first off this is not a syndicate this is just a standard tout service that's what i was about to say he's he's got a bunch of clients 
What what syndicate has a bunch of clients? <laughs> I, like he's saying, he's literally describing actually a tout service down to the thing where he says a tier one, two, three play. That's just, you know, oh, hey, yeah, a five unit, big bomb banger, max bet. Oh, this is a one unit half half wager. And then he, he goes on as far as to say, now this is actually pretty comical, that he uses AOL Messenger. No, he didn't say that. I will, listen. I'm I'm going to I'm Sorry, going to defend what what Simon Hunter's reputation. He, I think they're using AOL email address. Like it yeah, comes from an yeah. AOL email. Okay, address. okay. Yeah. Sorry. My if bad, if my someone bad. out there is still using AOL Messenger, then there's a real problem. So he's coming. So he's literally sending. Basically, he's getting an email. Yes. Tip. Yes. Tipster. Yep. Tout. That's what they call it in like the UK. Tipster. Mm -hmm. And he's getting tips. So when he says oh, I hit big on NBA because a guy gave out the Celtics, he's literally just. He's part of a group, so I, I'm assuming he doesn't pay for it because he's part of some master tout service. So he's like, I'm toting my NFL picks. So I get your NBA picks exactly. and you can get my NFL picks. Right. Crowdsourcing touting. Yes. That's Is what that, it sounds like to me. That That's the first impression I got. So as soon as he mentions clients to me. Okay, but if he just thinks that that is a, called like a syndicate, that's that's probably, you know what I mean? It's fair because we don't, we don't own the term syndicate. Like most people in the betting space would consider it something different. Agreed. But in the event that he's just misusing the word or he has a different definition of the word, that's then he's actually fine. He just runs a tote service with a bunch of guys. Hit it. So it's a hundred guys who, you know, we have a, I have a woman I literally just had lunch with this over this weekend. She's a, she's a house mom. She's a mom with three kids. She's our cricket expert. Like this woman, you would never know. She looks like a hippie with her glasses. So, yeah, man, it's it's all like people wouldn't even know. You're she's your next door neighbor. You have no idea this woman deals with hundreds of thousands of dollars. All right, so I guess my question is: Let's say I want to um, be part of the syndicate, not from a knowledge standpoint, but from a money standpoint. Like I want to put money in. Like you want to be a that client. part of it work? See, stop, stop so that right be, there. Like, you see yeah. what his response was right away? You, you I say I want to put money in. He says, so you want to be a client. It's a tout service. Yeah, it's not because obviously, listen, there's people who reach out to me all the time and they're like, how can I get in on your bets? Like, can you just, can I just give you a certain amount of money? And when you go bet it, you just like, you add bet a little extra, for bet me. a little extra for me. And I oftentimes I say like, you know, for some sports we're betting to our max, like we're, we're bet. So there's no, there's actually no room to cut you in because I'm, I'm working with other partners already divvying up a share, but he mentions it as a client. Like you, you want to get the plays. Like you want to, it's, it's essentially the nomenclature he's using are, it is around getting the picks for a fee rather than getting a part of the bet. Yeah. He's like, you want the picks? You want to be a client? Yeah. I will sell you yes. a client. I also just want to say too, um, this is about the fourth time I've watched this. Okay. Like the video. Yeah. Um, so if you're not watching the circles off, and you don't normally watch, this might be a good one to watch because I'll include this video in the, the actual YouTube. But this is around the point where you can tell, and Rob even had talked to me about it prior to, you can tell by Ross Tucker's like facial expressions and stuff that even he is kind of like, what is going on? Uh, yeah, that, that's what I felt. I mean, obviously, like I, I actually haven't watched another one of, of Ross Tucker's YouTube video. So I don't know, like certain hosts have their style, maybe some tune out, maybe some can listen, but like they're focusing on other things, but like you could tell off the bat immediately when he mentioned the buying of other syndicates, like Ross took note of that. He's like, I'm going to hit him on this one. I'm going to ask him another one as the interview goes on and we'll listen to it. I found like the follow-ups got less and less, and maybe he was tuning it out more and more. I don't know if he maybe, maybe picked up on something of like a lot of this doesn't make sense, but a lot of this doesn't make sense. We'll keep, we'll keep going. I would vest you like you would have to give your social, your driver's license and things like that. And you know, they'd probably do a nice little background check on you. See if you're working for other groups or see what you're up to. And then you'd pretty much you put on a waiting list. And once you're approved, they would add you to, you know, if you want to work on, if you want to get my plays, they would add you to the list. If someone wanted to drop out, but I haven't lost a client in five years and I just doubled the price. And they all read up. So it's kind pause, of like, pause, 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 yeah. I think it's one of those. I actually missed that part a couple of times too. So now, now it's all clear. There's I mean, it's somewhat, it's somewhat clear because he still says that in order for you to buy his picks, you have to submit him a, a social and an ID, which why would he need that? Yeah. 
I mean, there's unless he's setting up accounts, but yeah, wouldn't be doing that. I don't know. There's a lots of reasons you might want to listen. the The nature of the business we deal with. If you got guys that can do a quick look up on a guy, you might want to make sure that they're not law enforcement for some reason. If you're doing some sort of activities that I'm not saying I've ever done this, but I'm just putting two and two together of why you'd want to do a background check on a person for the most part. But right away, he says that he doubled his price for this year. That's. But he said he hasn't lost a client in five years. That's And he doubled his price. But why doesn't he just have more clients? Or why doesn't he? Oh, they talk about that. Don't go, worry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Not right here. I don't know, but they talk about okay, that. Right, okay, let's go. Okay. Let's hit it. You get in, you don't want to leave it. And you know how it is. I mean, over COVID, all these guys who bet under me, like bet my plays, they're all these guys' value and how much money they have went up tensfold. I mean, these rich people got way richer over COVID. So that's why I upped my price because it was like, you know, I'm, there's, a, there's a recession. Not ev- not everyone's going through a recession, but everyone kind of is. You know what I mean? Did you say so how much he charges or not? Like, no. I took a risk. I wanted more money. And by the weekend, every person signed up for the upcoming 2022 season. So I'm in a good spot with that. So do they only do NFL or do they have to do everything or they can pick and choose their sports? Pick and choose. So like I only take on 100 people. I wish I took on more, but they're a little old school. They don't want me to have a bigger list. What For what? That's something the I toning? I wish I could take so, on more. Why don't you just take on more clients when you're just selling pigs or useless garbage? They, anyways. they, who I'm not clear on who they is. So there's a, there's somebody above him. Big brother. They Bob. do not want Bob's. Yeah, he works for Bob. Oh, sorry, Bob. Bob Thank Bob. you. We, 73. Bob is 73. Works for Bob. So they is Bob and presumably someone else who's above him does not want him to have more, more clients. If he's okay but, with a hundred, then he's okay with a thousand. But okay, now 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 this is public and it's out there, so we can talk about it. He said all this stuff under his own. If you didn't want somebody to have more clients, you're probably running an operation that's not kosher. But what do you mean? Like you're, they're doing something where they don't want to cause a stir. But dude, they're sending out NFL picks to a hundred people. I don't I don't know what's going on. Why here. there's no I'm, I'm, there's I'm literally I'm no reason to... for a hundred to be the max. A hundred can't be a, I, a reasonable max. But I know what Rob's saying though too. Like tie in now the social security number and your ID. Right. You putting the pieces together here. No, I literally have zero <laughs> clue what's going on. I have on. no clue either. But Nobody I'm trying knows. to decipher here why you would need to, to do background checks on people. Then you're trying to keep the operation as small as possible and you're selling picks. Like either this is run by, you know, some gangsters or something who just don't want the... No, I don't even think it's that. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't even say that. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying, I'm trying to decipher just as much as everyone At else. At this is. point in the video, what I think is happening is he has a tote list and he sells picks. And, and he's I think honestly, up. that's it. Yeah, I yeah, think I that's think it. some bunch of made up stuff. No, I know. He definitely, there's definitely a guy, Bob, 73 years old, but I just don't know if that guy maybe had started the tote service and then gave this guy clients or something. Maybe, but like, in terms of like why you would want it, just to me, it wouldn't make sense as to why you would cap it at a hundred clients for a tout service if they're, if you're getting paid clients. Also, especially if every single client, if you're saying you every single client is re upping and everybody's doubling and there's people asking to get in. What? So logically speaking, one hundred people having your NFL pick is the same as one million people having your NFL pick. Agreed. But so now, what I'm saying to if you, it's a valuable pick. What right? I, it's not the same thing. What I'm putting out there is why would you ever want to restrict the amount of people? It's just restricting the amount of money. Yeah, there's the, this whole video doesn't make sense, though. That's why. All right. Okay, well, let, let, uh, let's, let's, say, let's see why they don't want him to have more than 100. About constantly, because I want more money like anyone else. Of course. Yeah. But I get it. These guys are old school. There's a way it's done. So they, they keep the, the clientele small and secure, and there's a value to that. But, well, yeah, I would say the <laughs> most you can have is 100 per, per sport. For sport. And football is e- easily our biggest sport. NFL, college, those are the two biggest ones. Internationally, cricket, soccer, NBA, those are probably the biggest ones. But for here in America, it, it definitely goes NFL, college, football, and then baseball is our biggest charge for like selecting picks. So, so he's saying charge you said for earlier, selecting you said it's a, a high-pressure yeah. job. Yeah. Talk about that. Talk about that. You, there's 100 people you work with. You're the only one. Who bets NFL? Well, I got guys under me that they bet it, but they're not the. They don't put out the list. Like they don't put out the plays. When it all comes down, so they don't to release the, the tote. They don't release the tote plays. Playing that week again, I go. Th-
Okay. He's got guys under him. He releases the players. That bet it, but they don't put out the list. So he's just got clients who's literally releasing the picks to that are just going to bet it. Like, I wouldn't... I'm, listen, everything I'm saying right now, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's true. You're getting a real live reaction. I'm still very confused. I'm hoping, obviously, that within the next 10 no, I think, minutes... But we'll I think, we, I think that's, that's the, it's clear cut at this point. I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't even, I don't even know what's going on. I'm using exact words. I'm the only one. I'm not the only one who bets NFL. He says there's people under me that bet NFL, but they don't put out the list. Yeah. They just get the plays sent to them and they bet them. Yes. Maybe is what he's inferring. Yes. Okay. Through all this stuff with these guys, I'm not, there's certain weeks where, yeah, I'll take senior role. I'll be like, no. Like, we're taking this dog here because I hate betting favorites. But if a guy gives me enough reasons, I'll take a favorite. No. There's just always such value in the dog and taking the money line. No, there the isn't. So, if, pause, 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 pause. So, he, you're telling me he, this guy, who, by the way, we can pull up his old videos of what he said on, on some other stuff. I think, I you're, think we might troll, have covered man. this. This before. is an absolute troll, though, because how is he saying that he's running the NFL plays? He's the big dog running NFL plays hundreds of thousands of dollars, hundreds of people syndicate, and then goes as far as to literally just say what he just said, which was, I, I, I mean, I can't quote it because it's just- There's always value money. in betting the dog's money line. And I hate betting the favorites. I hate betting the favorites, but if you give me a reason to bet the favorite, I will. Yeah, he said, and on top of that too, he says, sometimes I take the senior role and say, no, this is what we're betting on. Hmm, you, picked up, you, you picked up on something I didn't. What does that even mean? Sometimes I take the senior role. Because he's saying, yeah, some, he did mention that sometimes he like kiboshes other picks yeah. and be like, no, 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 we're doing no, I'm in the blender right now. I have, okay, let's see if we can. I have no idea. Baseball is our biggest charge for like the rewind picks. So one of the things you said earlier, you said it's a, it's a high pressure job. Yeah. Talk about that. Talk about that. You, there's a hundred people you work with. You're the only one who bets NFL. Well, I got guys under me that they bet it, but they're not the, they don't put out the list. Like right. they don't put out the plays. When it all comes down to, I'm the one that dictates mm-hmm. what we're playing that week. Again, I go through all this stuff with these guys. I'm not, there's certain weeks where, yeah, I'll take senior role. I'll be like, no, like we're taking this dog here. Cause I hate betting favorites, but if a guy <laughs> gives me enough reasons, I'll take a favorite. There's just always such value in the dog and taking the money line and underdog. So okay, I might've caught up on for something me, here. This- I think what he's saying is members of the syndicate, AKA his tout list can send him suggestions. You're you're saying like a, like a guy under him is like, cappers. what do you think? What do you think of Cowboys this week? Oh, you know what I think it is? You know how like tout groups, okay. You know how tout groups sometimes they'll have like different touts that way. Like, oh, they could be like, yo, this guy's hot this week. Yeah, Check yeah. out this guy. So they probably have a, the animals, you they know? probably have a few different touts. Yeah. The animal crew. Yeah. The they, farm probably, animals. they probably have a few, a few different touts. And then, so he's the, the head tout for NFL. He's calling the shots for NFL. He releases the plays to the client list. Mm-hmm. But other people could obviously be like, give me the Chargers this week. And he'll be like, no, they're a favorite. Next. <laughs> <laughs> I, give, I'll occasionally take a favorite if you give me a good reason to. It's like, yeah, how about like the line is three and it should be four and a half. That's a good reason to take the favorite. No? Like if I don't. I don't. Okay, keep going. Keep going. This is great. Uh, it's actually Stress really of it's good. the losing streaks. Everyone's going to lose. Like, of course, as a pro, yeah. I'm used to that. I know that, but I feel like the thing, what I'm so great at is it's never more than two weeks. And especially during oh, the NFL season, Lord. I've never had back to back, like really bad losing weeks. Mm. He, he um, also did just say, um, never more than two weeks, never more than two, two weeks. weeks. I've never had two weeks. No, he said he never had back to back bad losing, losing weeks. weeks. So like he probably oh, lost, okay, a, okay, he okay. lost a, little, a couple units, nothing bad. Go ahead. But, it does happen. And like I've had losing months. I mean, last year I had a really bad October, which is very rare for me. Stop. Please stop right now. I've never had back-to-back bad losing weeks. Pre- followed by about 10 seconds later, last year I had a really bad October. And preceded by, it's never more than two weeks. It's not. <laughs> now, I will give him credit. I will say October 2021, there were at least five Sundays. If there were only four Sundays, this story is actually impossible. Technically, what he's saying is possible. He might have had like a really bad first, really, third, first. and fifth week. Yeah, exactly. Okay, listen, it checks out. It I, checks out. So listen, I mean, it is possible. Can't call a full BS on that. 
But did you actually go back and look? At I got the, cal- the calendar up right in front of me, October 2021. <laughs> I knew this was coming. I knew nice. that part was coming. Nice. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. But luckily, November, December, the playoffs were incredible for me. So that stuff's like, that's what it's all about. But when you're in the thick of it, like you're in the middle of this football season and you're losing and it's cold here in New Jersey, man, the air smells terrible. The food tastes awful. Your life is just terrible. But then once I start winning again, it kind of brings it back. But I think that's, you need to be that kind of way to make it in this business. You kind of, you can't be like, oh, it's all good. I'll get it back. No, you need to kind of suffer and be like, instead of putting 80 hours in this week, I'm putting 85. Oh, oh the spread investing. God, please. <laughs> trying to get this locked down. So for me, it's, um, again, the money's awesome, but it's definitely about the feeling of being right on a Tuesday for a game on a Sunday is the coolest feeling in the world. Like sometimes the lines will open and I'll know literally on a Monday, like that's a trap. The whole public's going to oh. be betting this one side and I will all week will be betting consistently on the other number. And I'll just keep getting good value. And the sports books will never know it's me because I'm such a small, I'm done such little thing. bets at a time. They won't know that I'm taking advantage of them. No, we got to rewind that. that. There, there's there's rewind actually way too no. much that just happened there. I actually don't even remember what I wanted to react no, to first because no. I got so triggered immediately. Be, what was before the public betting stuff? Oh, man. No. Something sent me for like a We didn't pause it quick spin. enough, man. We didn't pause I was like, it quick enough. I can't even remember now because it's that's the a- losing streaks. Hey, rewind it. We, oh my God, man. Ah, oh, he's literally said that he keeps betting slowly, but, but surely against the public and he keeps getting good value, but that would literally just mean he's get, keeps getting bad value. He just keeps betting. Yeah. But against like, the number, like he keep it's, if it's still available and he's keep getting better number every exactly. time that he's getting bad value in his previous ones. Oh, I, uh, yes. Agreed. But they'll if never the, know it's the him. Still, but they'll, they'll never know, know it's him. Uh, oh, you know what he said? It was something about, uh, Oh, the 85 hours a week. Oh, yeah. Okay, first of all, if anyone thinks that they're like, when you're in a slump, if you put in like an extra four or five hours the next week, it's going to change things. It ain't going to change things. Listen, there's there's working hard. Listen, you can work hard and make money by working hard. And I don't think anyone who bets on sports would say that they don't work hard. But this is not something where it's like, oh, rough stretch. Going to get up a couple hours earlier going to grind a little bit harder. Like you're, what is he doing in those five extra hours? That's and what why, I really and why is know. he not doing that every week then? That's, that's exactly. that much more profitable. <laughs> I don't get it, man. I don't get it. But the public betting stuff, you like, that's how you, that's how you already know that this is, um, I mean, for lack of a better term, like Mickey Mouse operation, because you would never, ever, ever see someone who seriously bets the NFL at a high level who would even care about what other people are betting at least from a public perspective. You'd care about what other people are betting because you want to time your bets always. And that's important because you're always looking for the best to get the best of the number. But like the whole notion of a trap of the books put, we had Chris Bennett on last week. Okay. The whole notion of a trap line, the guy's like, yeah, some days I just come in. I'm like, yeah, I just, make it. I just literally just say, yeah, this is the number. What like that? And, that's, he, and he's posting NFL lines for one of the three market makers. <laughs> it's that, literally, one of the market makers is saying, yeah, you know, sometimes I come in, I just like, ah, you know, I think that one's off. We're gonna move it a little bit and and whatever. Like the whole notion that odds makers put out trap lines. I don't know where this started. I don't know how it's continued. I don't know how people still bet into this stuff. I mean, I every content publication puts stuff out there in regards of the, the public betting percentages. So I can, I can see why nobody knows that it's nonsense, but for those watching, it is absolutely nonsense. So, so hold up though. The part, the part that he says about uh, that he keeps betting a little bit at a time throughout the week is also hilarious because he's probably getting like, if he has to bet a, how much are you betting that you have to bet a little bit at a time? Let's be realistic. Okay, first and foremost, and here's another thing that we we know from experience, right? Most of the soft recreational books, the non-market makers, they're really only moving their lines based off of the market makers for the most part. We can't say that with absolute certainty. Obviously, they might be some smaller book might take a big bet, move their number, balance action, whatever. But for the most part, a lot of these books are just looking at Circa, Las Vegas, Bet Chris, Pinnacle, and they're shading the lines based off of their clientele. 
And whenever one of those books moves, they're going to move their number as well. Well, they also just take it from the, like, it's not DraftKings actually moving lines. They're odds provider, SB Tech, they would have like UK base, US base, and then they just like trade it and, and assume it. And if they take a big bet on another SB Tech platform, and then technically, I guess they could use that as well. But yes, for the most part, 100%. So the point I'm getting at here is that, especially again, if we go back to the Chris Bennett interview last week, and people like, please check it out. It was a you know, really interesting stuff, but he debunked the myth of the 50-50 action on games. He says, don't, most of the games, we don't have 50-50 action. We're not trying to get 50-50 action. And when I, you know, a lot of people think that the book's trying to balance the action so that they're guaranteed money, no matter what side comes in. And he's like, no, we don't do that. So now knowing that and having consulted for sports books myself and knowing that they do the same thing, the public action doesn't mean anything. They don't care. The number, the public's not going to move the number anyways. So like if, if he's waiting for the public to take, a, like it's not going to happen. There's not an influential, an influential bet has to come in for the most part for the number to move. The public betting means nothing. You know what I'm saying? So this guy's literally it's going to the re- home rewind page it of the though. action. Yeah. Rewind it because I actually got to hear what he says about getting a little bit amount down at time so the sports book will never know it's him to make it in this business you kind of you can't be like oh it's all good i'll get it back no you need to kind of suffer and be like instead of putting 80 hours in this week i'm putting 85 hey guess 90 what hours always put 85 sleeping always put 90 if it's valuable down. so yeah. for me it's um again the money's awesome but it's definitely about the feeling of being right on a tuesday for a game on a sunday is the coolest feeling in the close, world close close like, close sometimes it lines Okay, the only way you could actually, in theory, be right on Tuesday for a game on a Sunday is if you achieve market close line value. Correct. End all, be all, end of discussion. If you want to argue, we, we could do it at another no, time no, for I, anyone, but that's that's it. Yep. Next. Sometimes the lines will open and I'll know literally on a Monday, like that's a trap. The whole public's going to be betting this one side and I will all week will be betting consistently on the other number and I'll just keep getting good value and the sports books will never know it's close, me. Close, close. So- okay, by nature, what he's saying right now is a contradiction. The value become the value comes in the form of beating the closing line, and whether you want to say oh closing line value is not that indicator. At the very end of the day, you do have value because you can arb out pregame at a higher limit and then just make your profit in expected value there. So, yep. If you have something that is minus six, and then that game closes minus ten, you have value on tons that. of value. You have tons of value. You, you can, can actually arb it out. You can calculate exactly how much value. And in have. and some books as well, you They'll can actually you. cash out your bet for a higher value than you actually place the bet. For sure. And that would even be with a VIG. Which exactly. Still works. Yeah. So in this scenario, what he's saying is the game will open, uh, call it Eagles minus six versus the Cowboys. All right, maybe not this year, but Eagles minus six versus the Cowboys. And what he's saying is everyone's going to be on the Eagles. That's going to be a trap game. The public's going to keep coming in on the Eagles. So I'm going to bet the other side slowly. So that means he's going to bet minus, he's going to bet Cowboys plus six, okay? Eagles move minus seven. He's like, I'm getting great value now. Bet's plus seven. So now his plus six, underwater. Yeah. Plus seven, neutral. Goes seven and a half. Even better value. <laughs> his plus seven and a half, now neutral. Plus seven, underwater. Plus six, see ya. He keeps going up. And then he's like, now I just have great value bets. And they're all such small amounts that the sports book will never know it's me. Never know it's you what. They will gladly take your action of course. on the plus six when they're closing... Minus nine. The sports book's never going to know it's him because they're never going to find that account because because it's going to be be so far in the red. (laughs) They're going to look, they're going to know it's you because they're going to give you an offer for the VIP program. (laughs) Keep going. Such little bets at a time. They won't know that I'm taking advantage of them. So Mm -hmm. that, that to me is why I love doing what I do. I love athletic greens, Simon. When you're in those (laughs) bad moments, the air doesn't fit tastes good or whatever yeah get some get some athletic green 75 high quality vitamins what minerals whole food source superfood <laughs> probiotics and adaptogens simon you don't look no offense you don't look like a guy that eats a lot of vegetables <laughs> and i don't mean that from your physique i just don't picture you eating a lot of vegetables so let's talk to her. okay i got one more question though yes please so how do you, how do they let you do media and why do they let you do great, media? Incredible like question. Great question. Talk about the plays that you like. Is there a negative there? Or I guess 
They've all already made those plays by the time you say them. Somewhere. Oh, this is the clip I've seen now. This gets Definitely good. that. They already made the plays. And this isn't my real name, which is another reason I'm allowed to get away and do this. Who but cares? The like, biggest thing pause, is... Pause. Yeah. Well, who cares? It doesn't matter if it's his real name no, or not. No. Especially when you're putting your old face out there. It, it, it's completely irrelevant. It doesn't matter. If you have pull, you have pull. If you're going to say something publicly, who cares if it's your real name? Yeah. I mean, at this point, that might as well be his real name. It's the same thing. I could go on the Matchbook podcast this year as as Bob Rosola <laughs> and start giving out plays. They're still going to move it while I'm talking about them in real time. Like, there's no way around it. If you like, who cares if it's not your real name? It's completely irrelevant. Anyways, keep going. I pay for all of it. Like, I, I, what last year that Mac Jones going fifth overall and Trey going third. I got some really good info about that draft thing. And the guy told me straight up, if you if you give this out on your show, you got to give me ten percent of whatever you win on that. Again, I'm already paying a big and a juice every time I make a bet. Mm-hmm. Now you're paying more. So I don't do it often, honestly. Like during the season, I'll give out big plays. Those are my own personal plays. But if I get a tip of this other group really liked, um, what was a really big one for me? Oh, the final week of the year, I had a group that loved the Jaguars. I think they might have been catching eight at home against the Colts. Catching like 14. I gave that on the show. I had to pay a big fee on that. So that's one of those where it's like there's an agreement with these groups that if I'm going to give out their stuff, of course, I'll always pay it back just because I think any gambler knows. Oh, yeah. We missed too much. Go ahead, Rob. Okay, first of all, if he's going to give out another group stuff, there's a high likelihood that if that group is a successful group, well, he said it already moved at the beginning. Yeah, so you Ross asked him, and then he said, he's like, well, why, why did they let you do it? They already bet? He's like, yeah, they already bet it. Right. But um, So th- there's two options here, right? There's no value on the after move. Agreed. Move, but it didn't even move. He's not. It's either it move. moved, and there's no, long, there's no value, because they would have kept betting it at that number, or it didn't move, in which case, either they have like a really great operation where they can keep things under wraps, highly unlikely at this point the amount of back-end PPH access, but we can get into that another day. And Or it didn't move and there's no real value. So like that's, that's just like, it's just bad. I mean, I also don't really understand how he said, like, okay, so he He's going to give 10% of his bet? That, no, I was fixated on that too. No, no, well, how, and I'm not trying to amount shame because I hate that, but how much are you betting that you're given 20%? Like, like, I got to calculate the odds. Okay, Rob, talk. I'm going to calculate the odds on if he's no, betting but, a minus 10 and he gives out 20%. But he said 10. He said 10%. 10%. 10%. So what's he betting? Minus 200? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, No, he doesn't He doesn't bet favorites. Well, that's true. <laughs> oh, that? Well, no, he occasionally bets favorites. Yeah. If it, Okay, but in, in this scenario, what would you, like if you're giving out 10% of your bet on a free roll, essentially. So like now, if you lose, you're on the hook for it. But if it wins, like you're giving out the ten percent of the win, you're betting a way higher vig than the, what the original bet is. Yeah. So it's very possible you don't even have an edge at that number. Now, if it's info based, like Mac Jones, Trey Lance, okay, sure, there might be an argument where somebody says I info know this based that actually does happen, and then you do typically would share a slice of the bet. Correct. But but what he said is though is like if you give this out on your show, it would have nothing to do with giving it out on the show. It would have more to do with like if yeah. I'm giving you the info. Yeah, if somebody messages back. me and says, hey, you know, Paolo Banchero's going uh, first overall in the NBA draft, get down what you can, I'm going to share, you know, my bet with them. 100%. That's, that's the way it is. In some ways, like this part, it, I know like not completely, but in some ways, it's like he's paying a tout service for picks to give out, to turn around and give out. I, I don't know that. He says another group. I don't know what his definition of another group is. This is what causes like so yeah. much complexity in this situation. Because if I say another group, me personally, Johnny says another group. These are people that we've had on this podcast before. Guys like Harud and Drew, for example. Like guys that we know are serious betters that when we get information from them, the the you know, it's good info. And they're telling us to bet it at current market number, whatever. That to me is another group. It's not somebody who's selling picks to a hundred person, you know, a, a client list of a hundred. To me, I'm not calling that another group. So that's where the complexity comes in for me. All right, let's replay back here and see, see what he says here. Okay. Of the Jaguars. I think they might've been catching eight at home against the Colts. 
I gave that on the show, I had to pay a big fee on that. So that's one of those where it's like, there's an agreement with these groups. And if I'm going to give out their stuff, of course, I'll always pay it back just because I think any gambler knows it's, it's kind of a karma based business. Like you need good karma. To make Literally it. not even a bad I, I, karma based. I, 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 pa- pause, pause, it, pause, pause, pause. We got, wait, we got honestly, to get back to the other I think there's a co- there's It's actually the inverse. I think the bigger a scumbag you are, the further you get ahead in the gambling business. I'll tell you how big of a scumbag I am. Mo- the most of the serious people I know, they may be they may be good people at heart, but ruthless in the gambling business. Let's put it that way. Let's just say if karma was a real thing, most of, most of my inner circle, they wouldn't be. Would be bust. Yeah, they would be okay, here, you know, under a bridge. I'll somewhere. break this down quick. So in terms of like giving away a percentage of your bet. Now, I I don't really know exactly what he's saying. As pretty much as with this whole interview. I have no <laughs> idea what's going on. It's, but it's a lot of deciphering. He says, so he says if he if someone gives him a tip, which Jags plus eight, whatever. As Rob mentioned that he said they're four plus fourteen. But I'm pretty sure I'm gonna look it up, look, but it, I'm it doesn't matter. Sure whatever, plus it doesn't matter. Let's just say let's say gives it out Jags plus eight and he had Jags plus eight. So if he's betting Jags plus eight, if he needs to tip 10% to the guy if he wins the bet and not if he loses the bet, there's literally zero chance it's profitable. Because now instead of betting minus 110, instead of laying 110 to win 100, he's laying 110 to win 90. So he has to give up 10% of the winnings. So now he's laying like a, you know, minus 123, 25. So he can't, you can't win on that. That's just dumb. You're never going to win with that. However, I, he, he's not clear. If he just is saying, if someone sends me a pick, then I send them back 10% of my bet volume, like they get a 10% cut, win or loss, then I actually suppose that that is fine. Like there's no, I wouldn't, that wouldn't be crazy. So um, up to interpretation, but I've, I have no idea what he's saying. I think this whole interview is up to interpretation. Yeah, it's really all up to interpretation. I, I will say like, listen, I, this is not, I'm not the best interviewer in the world. Definitely not. I, I really wish that I could be in Ross Tucker's chair for this one. Just to ask him questions. What did he say at the end, though, what, that we were laughing at? Right at the end. I don't know. I've, uh, Rewind been, this a little. There's been too much. There's been we, too much that's happened. That's been. We have to stop this every five seconds with all the content just jam packed in here. <laughs> Final week of the year. I had a group that loved the Jaguars. I think they might have been catching eight at home against the Colts. I gave that on the show. I had to pay a big fee on that. So that's one of those where it's a like fee. he probably pays there's 10% an agreement of with these groups. And Some if I'm going to give out their stuff, of course, I'll always pay it back just because. I think any gambler knows it's it's oh, kind yeah, of a karma based. based business. Like you need good karma to make it in this business. Literally, not even karma. at all a karma based business. Literally, a relationship business. Yes. Yeah. Which, yeah. If that if he means that, it's fair. You definitely have to have good relationships, but it's pretty much a numbers game and a statistical based business. But also, like, if if another group came to you and said, like, we, we like the Jags plus fourteen against the Colts, final week of the season. What happens if you're like, I also like the Jags? And then you go out and give well, them it's money. An, it's an honor system. It's an honor system. Like, you shouldn't be doing that technically. But the way I see it is like, what type of fee is he paying? Like, do do I pay you? Like, so if you're telling me like, I like the Jags, I pay you a grand? I'm never going to be positive if I have to pay you a grand. But if I if I give you a percentage in which is illegal by the way, but if, if whatever something happened, then maybe I guess like, yeah, I'm not diluting my winnings and not my losses, but it seems here. Like if someone gives him a pick and he gives it on the show, he's got to pay them a lump sum is what it appears. And obviously quite obviously you cannot win if you're doing that. You know what happens with the, the best football betters when someone else gives them a pick, they don't care because they're already a great football better. Like seriously, I can't tell I can tell you the amount of times on a weekly basis where you know I know that opinions of other sharp betters are opposite of mine. They'll give me a pick. I'll be like, "Okay, that's great. They're going to go hit the market on this later on in the week. I'll bet the opposite side." Like most football betters don't even care about that stuff. I just want to call that out. I'm not saying that you can't value other people's opinions cuz you do. There's certain people you don't like. If I notice I'm on the opposite side of so X person every single week regularly, that's going to be a cause for concern for me because I know that person wins at betting the NFL. But occasionally, 
if someone else is on the opposite side or they say, I really like this game, but personally, I don't like the game. There's not many pros that are going out to bet that because somebody else told them to. Just want to put that out there. Fair enough. All right, hit it. Build good relationships. So I I have never gotten out of play where I didn't pay that person for that information or paid back, you know, the people that helped me out in other ways. Again, it's we there's so much to get into. Obviously, you don't have time for it, but a lot of well, my not. pay is in memorabilia. Like oh. if I kill it in a bet, instead of tipping me cash, a guy will tip me in a Tom Brady rookie card. That's so awesome. Tip him in a Rob Gronk. You know what that guy could do is he could tip you in, in cash in cash, and you can, if you really want to, get the Tom Brady rookie card with the cash. Cash is much more valuable because yeah, you I mean, can honestly, do whatever you want with again, the cash. I don't know why. I don't know. I, like, I don't, this part I don't made get me it. laugh. I, just don't I actually, this part made me actually laugh a lot. This is literally the equivalent of saying, basically, it's the equivalent of saying this. Yeah, I work a full time job. I make a lot of money, but there's so much to get into because. Uh, I don't get paid in uh, Canadian. I get paid in uh, U.S. dollars. It's literally the equivalent. Yeah, yeah. I so do, how I, much do I get into, man? Because they pay me in uh, in euros. So it's like if I, if I if I said, you know, Johnny, I really like this team this week, and they win, and you, I came into the office, and you're like, Rob, I'm gonna get your groceries for this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can you can charge instead of charging your car at home on your own power, you could charge in my garage this week. <laughs> Like I owe you twenty bucks, but uh, I'm gonna get you a lunch. Yeah, exactly. Equivalent, <laughs> same thing. What? I don't understand this at all. I mean, if he's a big fan of mem- memorabilia, I guess I get it. I I don't, I don't know, man. I really don't know. It's pretty funny, man. It it was this actually. I I wish I could have. Um, I wish I could have watched this live. I wish I could have actually done like a live reaction. There's a lot left, no? Or is this done? Well, it, There's a little it, bit more. Most of it's like uh, the rest is like uh, futures. Four, like four win total picks, by the way. And he's giving those out for free. We should watch this. And they've a bunch of them have already moved. <laughs> okay, too, click, click. And he references that they've already A lot moved. of stuff like that, too. Some people want certain things. You can do a lot of trading of goods for picks. So there's a lot that does go into it. But I always I always balance out whatever I owe to someone if I give out a plug. I trade my Pokemon cards for picks. All right. So some, what are some of the – here we are, you know, early, mid-July. What are some of the – Season win totals. Oh, these are just uh, picks. You're kind of liking right Wait, hold now. Hold up, hold up. I want to see his picks. Okay. Oh. You want to go into them? So we can go. Uh, we we got to break down his picks too. Right? I, I'm going to be one of the few people all year that's going to be pounding this team, but I love the Jaguars yeah. coming in. Literally not season. one of the few I'm, people. I'm looking at a team that literally entire market is going from the over. worst coaching hire in football to Doug Peterson, who I think is a brilliant coach, a man that knows how to coach up young talent and knows how to run a really good offense. So I don't want to, I'm getting a Jackson. I, I'm I'm sorry, I can't I'm, go through this. I'm again. sorry. I said, I, I actually I said agree with picks. a couple things that he said in these picks things, but it's irrelevant because the numbers have moved so significantly on two of his win totals that it's like, you would be insane to bet it now. Actually, you'd be an insane person to bet. We got to make some circles off bets between me and you. I'd love, I'd love to fire some bets. Yeah, no, but I'm saying like we got to fire some bets between me and you, and then keep a scoreboard. Like for example, a thing would be like we could we just fire off a wager on like if we think the picks he gives out on the show are going to be a net winner or a net loser. Mm. It's a good. That's interesting. And then we just fire him off. Keep we can even keep him on a board. We right could here. do whatever. We could do whatever. Um, this was that was. I mean, it's very entertaining. You, if you want to listen to the picks, you can listen this to that. This has been time. episode 61. No, 62. <laughs> 62. I'm but um, yeah, there's so much. There's there's a lot of background. I think we covered this before. I think we did a segment on Simon Hunter on this podcast before. We're 62 episodes deep now. I don't remember what we've no, we done. we did. We did the one about him giving out the thing where he said he only buys the half point on his biggest bets, but not if he's going to bet a, a thousand, bu- 10 grand. Oh, yeah. Sorry, he said if it's going to be a 10 grand. Of course, he's going to buy a half point. Yeah. Bang 10 grand. Of course. He's your biggest edge. You're going to bet the most money. Um, he also did a segment, which. The duffel bag. The duffel, second bag. duffel bag. The duffel yeah. bag. I mean, look. He, said, he gives his runners 5K. That's him. In, in duffel bags. Yeah. No way. That's him. Yeah. It's the same. <laughs> yeah. We aired, I think we aired that clip. Yeah. yeah that's him. We, I don't know if we I literally d- have to have him on the show. I'm going to. There's no other way. We have to have him on and let him rebuttal all the points we make. And then let's see if we can get some actual clear understanding on like. I'm literally Basically, in the process what is of messaging him right now. Producer Zach, please message him Thank and you. see if we can actually get him on the if show. If not, at least Chad Millman at the Action Network as well. 
because like Chad puts this guy on it. I have no problems with Chad Millman personally. I know it's, uh, whatever, but someone, someone has to explain this to me because there was way too much going on here. That was just like, it was actually, it was too much. I still don't know what's going on. I, I wish I just watched the clips because I thought that I'm like, oh, I don't really know what's going on because I just got, I'm watching only the clips, but the full video, not really painting a clearer picture. What, what, the, what this actually really reminds me of is if, if I went up to one of my friends, like a close friend of mine that let's say bets on sports, understands betting. And I said to them, hey, like 9 a.m. I told them in the morning, 5 p.m. today, you're doing an interview and you got to pretend that you're, you run like you're a pro, pro better. This is how I would respect. This is how I would ex- expect, excuse me, them to answer questions. There's no clarity on anything. It's just a bunch of rambling. By the way, I don't use my real name for the podcast either. <laughs> that's how that's how my betting partners allow me to do circles off and give away information. I don't use my real name. <laughs> my real name is Pepino Cocuzzo. <laughs> <laughs> What's he talking about? <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, how long we've we been running this, Zach? Uh, an hour. Too an long. Hour. Too, Too long. long. Time to so, wrap it up. We got some good stuff coming up uh, over the rest of the summer. Obviously, as we get into football season here, we'll be bringing on some more football guests, and we're going to do some um, strategy as well, uh, getting into survivor picks, which a lot of people are into, how to fill out those weekly um, picks contests as well for the stale lines pools. Got a lot of good stuff coming up. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, please thumbs up on YouTube or rate and review five stars wherever you're listening to it. Please also hit that subscribe bell. Is it a bell now? It's a button. There's you a s- button, but there's a bell for there's notifications. A- oh, thank you, Zach. Yeah, yeah, All right. One. But this has been yeah. episode number 62. Jason Kelsey of Circles Off. Signing off, as I always say, ride the wave or get out of the water. <laughs> <laughs>